Hello, welcome once again to Fair Tax Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Molero. And we are the Fair, Fair Tax, Tax guys. guys. And I forgot to start my timer, so you have to okay, talk here for I've a second. Okay, I've got it, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to do a blooper. No, you Anyways. got it. Nope. <laughs> so, go on with your normal <laughs> chit-chat, though. No, normal chit-chat. We are trying to put the Internal Revenue Service out of business. We are trying to get rid of the income tax, replace it with a fair tax, and we need your help to do it. How's that? Yeah. Does that help? Okay. Yes. Here we are. I think yeah. there's. I don't think there's anybody that would really like to keep the income tax if they have a choice not to. In fact, it was. Uh, I read an article sometime a while back that, uh, you know, the reason we pay income taxes is because the government puts us in jail if we don't. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Would, would you pay the income tax if you didn't have to? No, uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> so. No, no. And as far as Congress getting things done, you've got something there on your computer. Oh, there. this is cool. Now, this is uh, there, there's a place where you can make. You say there are motivational calendars all over the place. There's a place online where you can have demotivational calendars. <laughs> and I'm I'm really not trying to you know, plug them here, but you can go look it up if you want to. But they have uh, you know f- funny little sayings under various you know supposedly. Uh, uh, Serious you know, po- issues, positive words, and I love the one they say for consult. They've got this under consulting, but it actually belongs to Congress. If you're not part of the solution, there's really good money to be made in prolonging the problem. So that's, bingo, <laughs> that's not ours. I got that off the de- the demotivational calendar thing, but that's yep. uh, hence the last episode we found 1,551 proposals to change the tax code. All right, yes. is that prolonging the problem or what? <laughs> yes, that yeah. that is making. Yeah. Making a, a, a complex problem even worse, but okay. yes. and so, that's the problem. There's good money to be made if you're a lobbyist or you know a Congress critter that is beholden to a lobbyist. There's good money to be made by not actually solving the problem, yeah. just keeping the issue and running on it for cycle after cycle after cycle after cycle. And that makes the t- case for term limits, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, but we're not going to go there. We're about the fair tax, not yeah, about term limits. Right. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, right. I, I had to get that in there because that was just that was just too cool not to mention. <laughs> it was good yeah um, all right I'm gonna do uh, the grassroots corner okay uh, again uh, if you remember from last week we announced um, Steve Steve Hayes is chairman's report is going to be a separate email, as is Jim uh, Bennett's Grassroots Corner, and Fairtax Power Radio is going to have a separate email blast every week from AFFT. They were putting them all together, but the email was getting longer and longer and more cumbersome, and people weren't reading. So they said, you know, this would be more effective if we chop it up into smaller pieces, send them out on different days, all right? And if you're not getting uh, the uh, updates and so uh, other updates and information from Americans for Fair Taxation, go to fairtax.org and sign up. You will not get spam when you sign up from them. They, they very jealously guard your information and don't let anybody else get a hold of it. So fairtax.org, you can uh, you can get more information. And then there's other ways you can help, which we'll talk about yes. later. But And they're part of the solution. They're not looking to prolong right. the problem. That's right. Because uh, fair tax is the only true tax reform proposal in Congress at this yeah. time. Everything else is just tax relief. The tax, fair tax is yeah. the only true tax reform. I mean, fundamentally change the system. Absolutely. Yep. So okay, well, what, this what's is Jim uh, Bennett up to this week? Yep. Jim.Bennett at fairtax.org. Jim.Bennett at fairtax.org. Bennett has two N's and two T's. Help wanted LinkedIn. Okay, marketing communications team leader Randy Fisher is asking for a volunteer to step forward and manage the fair tax account Americans for Fair Taxation on LinkedIn. Randy has his hands full and then some. Okay, does he ever Um, handling incoming phone calls? Because when you call one eight hundred Fair Tax, goes to Randy. All right, Um, and emails and composing and pushing out Facebook and Twitter messages. Randy spends 50 to 60 hours a week, and that's no exaggeration, promoting the fair tax. Um, And he has said several times he's going to retire from it, but he never quite (laughs) does it. So uh, we're hoping he hangs on because he's a tremendously valuable person. All right, but he needs help with LinkedIn. I mean, there's only so many hours in a day. So if there's anybody out there that is familiar or wants to make themselves familiar with uh, Putting promoting the fair tax on LinkedIn, please give Randy a call. All right, Um, you can let's see, it's randy.fisher at fairtax.org 
or you can call 1-800-FAIRTAX and get a hold of them like that. Um, they really need some help. I and mean, we've only got, we got a lot of volunteers around the country, but we've got a few of them that do a lot. Bob and I spend a lot of time on FAIRTAX Power Radio, and that's really all I want to do, okay? Um, and uh, Randy needs some help with this. So if you think you can help with LinkedIn, contact Randy. It would be, it would be very good, all right? It would be a, a huge help. Now, so what's the latest news, Bob? Oh, the latest news is as we are recording this, this will be about a week and a half old by the time you actually see it, that the president has signed a $484 billion small business coronavirus relief bill into law. Which now, is, if we could just get him to sign the fair tax to go along with that, then that would be not just for this particular uh, little uh, pandemic we're dealing with. Yep. That would be permanent relief. Yeah, and we've talked about before <clears throat> how if the fair tax were in place right now, the government would be in much better shape to handle the economic crisis, the crisis with China. We're going to talk about that specifically and so forth. And then every, every other day of the year and in normal times, it would also really benefit the country, creating more jobs, creating more revenue for the government because it's going to boost the economy. And actually creating more demand for American products in the U.S. marketplace. Absolutely. That's one thing that we don't talk about a whole lot, that uh, the prices for stuff that's in the U.S. market, if it's made in America, those uh, the wholesale price carries in and embedded in it the cost of the income tax liability, all these compliance costs that goes on. Now, if the same product coming from a, a foreign country, that manufacturer mm -hmm. gets back all of the taxes that they've paid all along. Yeah, because so, they use a VAT tax. <clears throat> yeah, so the, the foreign manufacturer's goods enter the uh, world market without that embedded tax component, and so they come over here and they're not taxed. Yeah, <laughs> so. but the embedded costs stay in the American-made products, and when uh, American-made products go overseas, they're at a distinct disadvantage because of the cost of maintaining this crazy income tax. So if you want to make American jobs, of course you relieve the businesses of the uh, burden of having to pay income tax and having to pay an army of accountants and the tax attorneys to do that, but you also level the playing field in your own market. Yeah. You no longer give foreign produced goods an economic advantage and people shop with their pocketbook. You know, the, the, there's a movement now. Everybody's saying, well, look at the stuff you're buying. And if it says made in China, put it back and go get something that says made in the USA. Now, I'm sure there will be some people doing that, but not a not a whole lot right to begin with. People look at the price tag. Ooh, I'm going to buy the cheaper one. I don't care where it came from. Yeah. But uh, if you're going to keep shopping with your pocketbook, then we've got to make American goods more competitive here in our own market. And the way you do that, you, you make the cost of doing business for American business go way down. Mm -hmm. And again, the fair tax is the only way you do that because it gets rid of the corporate income tax. They no longer have to pay the tax liability. They no longer have to pay the compliance costs. They no longer have to spend a lot of time and effort complying with the tax code because there isn't one unless you're in the retail. If you're a retail business, you collect it. Now, that's a handle by your point of sale software and remit it to the state uh, Department of Revenue. If you are not in a retail business, the federal tax code doesn't touch you at all under yep. the fair tax. That's true. And uh, we should take that last two minutes from Bob here and make every person in Congress force them to listen to it because they're not. What are they doing? Okay, I've got a couple <laughs> of, and these are, you can find these anywhere on any website, Facebook, the news organizations, okay? Oh, they, they are pounding their chest and pounding the table up. We've got to bring our manufacturing back, but they're not talking about the way to do it. Yeah, this one. The headline is, support surges in the House for bringing supply chains uh, back from China. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is April 18th. Um, support for returning medical manufacturing from China to the United States is building in the House of Representatives as lawmakers look to disengage from the country that gave them the world novel uh, coronavirus. Yeah, but how are they going to do it? We know how they're going to do it. All right? <laughs> we know how they're going to try to do it. <clears throat> they're, they're going to add more proposals to the current income tax. They're going to make more proposals and try to change an already broken system to try to make it so that manufacturers come back from uh, 
uh, from China. Here's another one. Uh, this, this one has a line in it that is really precious, okay? Coronavirus pressures U.S. manufacturers to bring plants home from China. This is also published in, uh, on Fox, News, uh, Fox Business uh, April 18th. Okay, Senator Marco Rubio, Florida, discusses China's effect on uh, U.S. handling of the corona pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has America's uh, has America rethinking its reliance on China, and it goes on. So you still have to have an industry and industrial capacity as a country, and we've got away uh, from it. Well, yeah, why? Okay, now this is a, an important line down here a little bit farther. Indeed, only about 11 percent of U.S. GDP, gross domestic product, comes from manufacturing today down from almost 40 percent in 1945. Whoa, well, that's, <clears throat> that's a significant... It is. Yeah, so and if you look at, uh, there is a graphic that you can find on the internet uh, that makes, uh, it looks like bookshelves and it, it's a graphic representation of the growth of the tax code over the years. <laughs> and um, You better have a really sturdy bookshelf if you're going to put yeah, all that stuff yeah. on it. <laughs> and in 1945, it said that there were about 8,200 pages to the tax code, okay? Today, in, 19, in, in 2020, 19, in 2020, it's almost 10 times that much. It's well over 70,000 pages, probably 75, 76,000 pages. I'm not sure if anybody knows for sure, okay? So as uh, it, it, the tax code has gotten more complex, the amount of manufacturing as G, uh, measure of GDP has gone down. All right. I don't think that's a coincidence. No, I don't think so, okay? And these people, they want to change it, you know, something that makes it look like they're doing something. Uh, so, like Bob said, they can beat their chest. I'm, I'm proposing this to bring our... Why are our manufacturers over in China instead of here? Very simply because it's easier and cheaper to do that. Think about that. They have created a system of taxation and regulations in this country that is forcing manufacturers to go to China, all right? Yeah, and in that same article, it says China is attracting all of these businesses with tax breaks. They, they may be a communist regime, but they do understand how the capitalist system works and will use it to their advantage, no doubt about it. And I'll, I'll, I'll make one more thing here. Uh, Senator Rubio, if you're watching, we're disappointed in you. You have reneged on your promise to support the fair tax. He That's was right. all for it when he was talking about it. Absolutely. We'll talk about it now. So in Florida, if you're, and we try not to make this show too Florida centric because we're here, but it goes over everywhere. Senator Rubio, you need to get on board and go back to what you originally said you would do: support the fair tax. And we need, if those in Tennessee need to get on uh, Senator Blackburn, who yeah. is also big on this, we need to bring our manufacturing back. And she's mentioning everything except the fair tax. Yeah, yeah. And well, she was a co-sponsor. To be, to be honest, right now there is no bill in the Senate, but. Either one of them we could, could, use could Senator sponsor Senator Rubio it. or Senator Blackburn yeah. could actually. They could very sim very I mean, easily it, it's sponsor It's already them. written. Just go, Just take yep. the House version yep. and put an S number on it and introduce it. So anyways, I, I'm uh, titling this episode, One Tax, Many Solutions, okay? That's the fair tax, all right? And, and you know, we've already talked about why are our, business, our, our corporations leaving our country and going to a place like China because... It's cheaper and easier to do manufacturing over there. And now we're finding out with this crisis here, China is has threatened and I think has followed through on holding up shipment of medi medications that we yep. desperately need because like 90, 95% of our medications are now manufactured in uh, antibiotics. Yeah, are now manufactured in China instead of here. That's not a good situation no, when you've got an not. unreliable trading partner like that. All right, and they're threatening to hold it up. So we need to bring it back. But making gestures instead of really solving problems—that's not the way to do it. Okay, so uh, corporate corporate taxes eliminated. Here, here's the advantages of the fair tax, and this is how we're going to permanently permanently bring our manufacturing back to this country, okay? First off, under the fair tax as an advantage, 
uh, in this crisis, corporate taxes are eliminated and compliance costs greatly reduced, which Bob already mentioned, okay? When you eliminate the corporate tax and make it easier to run a business, companies are going to come flocking back to this country. Absolutely. Yep. And don't fall for this. Corporations have to pay their fair share because the costs of the income tax system, the tax liability itself, and all the compliance costs, they are simply rolled into the cost of the products and services that those businesses create. And those taxes ultimately roll down to the ultimate uh, retail consumer, right. which is where the fair tax is applied anyway. So just make it easier for the corporations to do business, a lot less expensive for corporations or businesses of any size to do business here in this country and you want to see jobs come back that'll do it and we'll reverse this trend where we had 40 percent manufacturing was 40 percent of GDP in 1945 and only 11 percent now all right maybe we can send that back up again by reducing the the amount of tax uh, regulation okay uh, tax regulation and and complexity goes down manufacturing goes up it's that simple all right um, it removes the uh, and Bob mentioned this also it removes the uh, foreign corporation price advantage and he, he, he spent a couple of minutes on this all right right now our companies are at a severe disadvantage because of the compliance cost built in to the cost of every product that they make and send overseas whereas those people strip the VAT tax away giving their uh, companies or their products a price advantage and it's a real disadvantage for our companies mm -hmm. that goes away under the fair tax under the fair tax when their products come to this country at the final consumer level the fair tax will be added the 23 yep. percent when our uh, products go overseas they're no longer going to have that expensive 22 or whatever 20 percent increase because of the compliance cost compliance costs are going to come way down okay our products will be much less expensive to manufacture so we're going to level the playing field the fair tax will level the playing field with international trade okay um as far as the government you know the government has been going through all kinds of gyrations trying to send out some stimulus checks and you know they wrangle in congress one party wants to add all this stuff the other party says no it's not necessary so it takes them longer to do it and so forth there's a lot of wrangling <laughs> under the fair tax full of pork when you get it done oh yeah and there's a lot of pork in there that two trillion dollar so bill you, was about half pork yeah so, at least uh, with right. the fair tax, that doesn't happen. No, no, because it's very simple. One, you can very quickly, you know, remember, you got the prebate. Every legal family gets the prebate each month based on the family size, not their income. Well, Congress can very quickly, and the president sign, we're going to increase the prebate for a certain period of time, a couple of months, half a year, whatever. We're going to increase the prebate and make sure that, that these families have some more money. And we're going to simultaneously, or you know, either or, reduce the uh, the fair tax rate from 23 down to maybe 20 percent something like that mm -hmm. plus if Congress and the president still think it's necessary to send out stimulus checks or relief checks we're already going to have the prebate system in place it's already going to be there and so once they decide how much they're going to send the Social Security Department which will be in in, uh, in charge of that can very quickly send out taxes right now they got the IRS which is a tax collection agency they've been tasked with the uh, the the issue of sending checks out to people that's not what they're there for uh -huh. they're they're there to collect pass, uh, taxes and occasionally send a refund okay okay yep. but not to send out checks so they're struggling with that and remember what we said in the last episode mm -hmm. first they said you had to have a tax uh, uh, return oh, and yeah. then they got hammered on that and they said oh oh oh, oh, oh yeah okay <laughs> Okay, we'll put this app online and you can okay. apply for it on this app okay, okay our, our time is running away here really quickly so I want to ask you this question yeah what happens if you fund the government with taxes on income and people get unemployed in massive numbers oh. they are no longer making an income because they're furloughed because they're laid off because their business is closed what happens to the federal revenue stream when it's based on income in a thing like this yep it drops but, 
those people that are still on layoff, those people that are on furlough, those people who are no longer making an income, to, uh, receiving a paycheck, they're still spending money. They have savings to fall back on. They get these stimulus packages. What happens to the revenue stream when it's based on spending rather than income? Yeah. It, it, much it's steadier. Much, much more steady. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. that includes Social Security and Medicare when they are going broke, especially since the president is now saying that he wanted to suspend. First he said suspend spend and now I think you say he permanently wants to get rid of the payroll tax which is a wonderful idea because yeah. that's one of the worst taxes there is that's right the fair tax does get rid of that but uh, if you're going to do that you've got to replace that money somehow that's right and the fair tax does that by spreading out the uh, cost of Social Security and Medicare over the population of people that buy things not just the population of people who are currently working for a paycheck yeah I mean because the situation we got us in right now because we have an income tax a lot of people are out of work which means there's going to be less revenue to the government and yet we are spending more it's a vicious yeah. cycle all right the fair tax better handles a crisis like this yes and and so and the fair tax will help Social Security and Medicare when we've got panic buyers and hoarders out there buying 12 cases of toilet paper at one time <laughs> yep <laughs> and and one of our listeners made the case you know if people did uh, panic buying and hoarding that would actually send more revenue to the government yes it would under they the fair send, tax then they could send us more of our own money back yeah. how's that <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, not only will it help in a crisis situation, but we've made the case before that the fair tax helps in, in every situation. It restores the Bill of Rights. Remember, the IRS has been allowed, authorized, to ignore the Bill of Rights. When they come after you with an audit, when they accuse you of not paying the legal amount of taxes, you're guilty and you have to prove yourself innocent. That's upside down. Yeah, all right? It is. That's terrible. All right. it, it, it's encouraging to hear a lot of people in the wake of this pandemic now thinking that the government has overreached its authority, mm -hmm. both on the federal level and a lot of state, Michigan especially. There are, there are people in the street, or there were as, uh, as we were recording this, yep. people in the street literally demanding that the governor be recalled. We want to reopen our economy. That, uh, you know. <sighs> You talk about governments running roughshod over the right of the people. We have seen that. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, you have examples of a guy uh, running on the beach and the police are harassing him. He's out there by himself. He's not hurting anybody. You know, they also didn't allow people to buy seeds to put, put a garden in their backyard. That was against the law or something. Yeah, they've really yeah. overreached. So and they, the same thing that the income tax is doing with our Bill of Rights. It's riding roughshod on the Bill of Rights. And with the fair tax, we restore the Bill of Rights. Okay. Absolutely, because there's so, no, no nasty organization out there to, uh, to violate it. You just pay your taxes when you buy stuff. End of story. Another important one is that the fair tax encourages savings and investment. The income tax taxes savings and investment. And in a crisis like this, having saving, having a you know a rainy day slush fund mm -hmm. is a good idea. All right. I, I remember a, a conversation on one of the fair tax Facebook groups talking about something. How do I convince the people that a frugal millionaire is still going to pay his fair share if you're making a lot of money but you're not spending? It. Yeah, that, that guy's not paying his fair share of taxes. Well, if that guy is making a lot of money and not spending it, what's he doing with it? Yeah, saving and investing, exactly. and that helps the economy. You should encourage that. Yeah, he's not going to stuff it under his mattress. Okay, no, probably. No, Bob not. is absolutely right on that. So, okay, we got about five minutes left, or a little less than five minutes, so we need to do our call of action. Okay, absolutely, go All for right. it. If you're going to help us with this, and we truly hope that you try to help us with this and try to get more people across the country to recognize that the fair tax is the only truly effective solution join AFFT the Americans for fair taxation and you can do that by going to fairtax.org in fact if you want to support them on, our, on a regular basis you can go to fairtax.org slash 1040 and join the 1040 club in which you commit to sending them ten dollars and forty cents each month all right this really helps the national organization they have a national website they have a database they got all kinds of things they're supposed to do it cost them a lot of money so we need your help with that okay uh, you can also while you're there you can look up and see if you got a state organization you can uh, help them out you can also look on Facebook too because a lot of the state organizations have Facebook pages so you can find them there okay I like this one share fair tax power radio videos and podcasts absolutely the, the I more mean people I, I wonder 
if Mike Huckabee watches this. Wouldn't that be cool if he does? That would be great. <laughs> you know, um, Anybody who knows him, steer him to, uh, to Fairtax Power Radio. Yeah. I'd love to talk to him. Or the talk master, Neil Bortz. Yes, I'd you love know. to talk to we're him. We're carrying too. on their legacy. We're, we're, we're trying. We don't quite have Neil Bortz's bully pulpit, but we're working on it. But we have Facebook Live Tuesday evening at 8 Eastern Time, and then it goes to YouTube, and a podcast is made out of it also that you can find on Spreaker.com, Apple Podcasts, and iHeartRadio, and um, we also have our own website, FairTaxGuys.com. Lots of ways to keep up with Fairtax Guys. We do a half-hour half show every week, so please keep up with us. And we mentioned this last week. Uh, go to fairtax.org, print out one of those candidate pledges, and if you go when they start having candidate town halls again, yeah, yeah. see if you can get your candidates for uh, especially the the House and Senate here on the on the federal level. But if you've got somebody on a local level or a state level, you know, educate them on the fair tax as well. And, yeah, uh, and that, yeah. so if you can get a candidate to sign the candidate pledge, which basically says, "I will co-sponsor the fair tax if I'm in the House or Senate. I'll vote for it if it comes up for me." Send that to us. Send a picture of it. The fair tax guys at gmail.com. Send us that picture. We'll put them on the uh, on the program here and show as many people as we can. As many candidates are out there are running on the fair tax. And be patient with the candidate. They might not be up, up to speed on the fair tax. That means you're going to have to spend some time with them. And so. Um, you can contact the president at whitehouse.gov slash contact. I mean, try this. And you, it's not just a one and done thing. You can do this every day. You can send them information about the uh, the, the fair tax or whatever is on your mind, okay? Yeah. So, and, and you can send him a point one on Monday and then a second point about the fair tax on go. Tuesday. Oh, yeah. and it does this as well on Wednesday. Oh, and it does this. There yeah. are endless lists of, hey, the fair tax will do this. And wouldn't you love to be the president that puts a padlock on the Internal Revenue Service? Oh, yeah. I would love to see that. Yeah, that would be great. Popvox, P O P V O X dot com. It's a great website in which uh, you have to sign up by giving them your your address and so forth because then they know what congressional district you're in and you can weigh in on any legislation at all. For instance, HR twenty five. Oh, that'd be a good one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, your comments will go to your congressman, okay? All right. And one more thing. You go to the FairTaxLogoStore.org, pick up the hats and the, the yeah. pins and the palm cards and the stuff. Uh, occasionally, we'll put a, a more detailed uh, det uh, blurb on what that's all about. We'll and if you have out. any questions about anything, contact us at TheFairTaxGuys at gmail.com. And listen to WTOB in Winston-Salem at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. And that's yeah. just about going to wrap up this edition of FairTax Power Radio. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I'm I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. We are the Fair Tax Guys, reminding you that the Fair Tax is the only truly fair tax, and once you understand it, you'll demand it. So what would you do for her? Well, we've got several programs that will help her. We just need to find out how much she makes. But the good news is, the less she does, the more we can help. Yeah. If I may, with the Fair Tax, we wouldn't even tax her income. So the more she makes, the more she has. But still, a consumption tax could eat up a lot of her income. Which is why at the beginning of every month, we're actually going to give back all that she pays in taxes on basic necessities. You're going to give her back her taxes? Every month on everything taxed on basic necessities. But we're also going to give it back to you and to every American citizen. <laughs> why? Well, we believe taxes should be fair.